All right. Good morning, everyone. Let's, uh, let's get through the obligatory slide here. So uh, Evan Klein, Satrix Solutions, customer feedback consulting firm, come by our booth. Uh, I think uh, Heather, my head of marketing, is that all right? Did we do OK on that front? Um, well, good. So and by the way, if you came by our booth yesterday, you might have noticed that uh, we had cupcakes uh, in celebration of my 50th birthday. And so hopefully. <laughs> So I wanted to tell you, since uh, most of you, I, could, I think, have probably not reached that milestone, it was a rough week for me. I'm hanging by a thread here. So anything you could do to make me feel better, whether that's applauding loudly or laughing at my jokes, that would really be appreciated. So we're going to talk about the requirements for establishing or creating a truly customer-centric culture in your organizations. Now, I, I've been to a number of sessions, and most of them have talked about having three to five tips that they've shared with you to bring back to your organizations. Uh, I think I'm a little overly ambitious. I have 15 minutes. We have upwards of 20 strategies or tactics that if I get through them, uh, we'll be able to talk about. Hopefully, they're going to bring, uh, you'll be able to bring some of those back to your company. So if I have 20 strategies and tactics versus the three to five, that means that this session is going to be four to six times more valuable, I think, than the other sessions that you guys have attended. So let's hope we can pull that off in my time allotted. So you know, what does it mean to be truly uh, customer-centric? We talk about that a lot, right? I mean, this is a notion that is commonly discussed. And, and frankly, we think about it, it is, it is vital to really cre uh, establishing your company as a, a world-class service organization. So this is our maturity model. I'm sure you've seen a lot of them. We don't have the definitions here, and frankly, we don't have time to go into them. But if we think about what a world-class customer experience company looks like, we probably have notions of the types of companies, and we've heard some discussed in earlier sessions. They really are really well aligned across their organization around their focus on the customer experience, right? They are standing apart from the competition based on the memorable service experience that they deliver. They, it is, it is uh, it formulated in their uh, customer retention metrics, in their uh, upsell cross-sell ability. It's helping them to achieve their growth rates. So achieving a world-class customer experience is uh, quite challenging. Uh, but it is something that I think um, if you focus on cultural adoption, you can move your company up the maturity model. So just as a curiosity, a show of hands, who thinks that their organizations have achieved world-class status when it comes to uh, customer experience? Okay, handful of folks in here. And, and, and frankly, I think that's uh, common, right? That's what we see more often than not, is that companies are more often in the initiated phase, in the emerging phase, some in the sophisticated phase. Hopefully, what we're going to share with you today uh, will uh, nudge you up that ladder a little bit, to, to, uh, closer towards world class. So there's a few uh, specific uh, focus areas that we're going to talk about today, and we'll drill down in each one. The first one, of course, and we've heard this all, your executives had to lead by example, right? So it has to start at the top. Uh, and again, I believe this is discussed quite often, but what does that mean, right? When we talk about, well, it has to be uh, initiated by the C-suite, uh, it means that, first of all, we have to have a definition of what the ideal customer experience is. Uh, secondarily, the C-suite really has to walk the walk. Um, a lot of companies pay lip service to this notion. You know, they say we really care about the customer experience. They have it on their website, but it, it really, you have to back it up uh, by a lot of actions, and we'll give you some ideas about how to do that. You have to treat employees the way you want your customers treated, and a lot of companies aren't doing that these days. And you have to have frequent conversations about the importance of the customer experience. So very specifically, here are some strategies or tactics that maybe you could take back. Some of these you may be doing already. Uh, some of these may be new to you. So first of all, encourage your leaders as customer success professionals, encourage them to have a direct link with the voice of the customer. And there's a lot of different ways you can do that. Of course, uh, you can uh, have them go on customer meetings. A number of our clients have uh, QBRs that the executives actually attend and you, you hear direct feedback. You can have a customer advisory board, which we think is a tremendous opportunity to get your customers in a room with some of your important, uh, your, uh, your executives and have a really strategic conversation there. 
or an executive sponsor program where your uh, executives are assigned certain customer accounts where they're uh, required to reach out on a regular basis. You, can, um, uh, you should have your business leaders ask this question, how does this improve the customer experience? So uh, the most common question I think across all organizations is, well, what does this mean to our ability to achieve our profit goals or our revenue goals, right? So that's commonplace. Every once in a while, let's get the executives to ask this alternative question. What does this mean to the customer experience? Amazon, by the way, you might have heard the story, has a great way of doing that. During all strategic conversations and meetings, they have an empty chair in the room, and that empty chair represents the customer. So it's always top of mind they're thinking about the customer experience and the decisions that they're making, how it affects the customer. Conduct interdepartmental surveys, right? So your groups within your company have to be working together if you want to better service your customers. If you are in customer success are reliant upon other organizations as you often are for input or feedback or knowledge, they have to be as responsive to you as they expect you to be responsive to your customers. So that's a great method to understand that dynamic, the interdepartmental survey. And have executives send emails and notes to employees, right? So that uh, you know, when someone has gone, gone above and beyond, that they are taking note of that. It's nothing that you know, motivates some people more than getting that recognition and understanding that the C-suite uh, appreciates the uh, work that they're doing going above and beyond. So those are some ideas about how the, C the senior ex executives can really lead by example and model those desired behaviors. Second, let's talk about uh, metrics or, or key performance indicators that your organization may be tracking. These have to be prominent in your organization if you want to build that culture. Uh, you have to uh, talk about uh, the specific customer success metrics or customer experience metrics, and it has to be an ongoing conversation. Right, so identify where gaps exist. Uh, a lot of people are driven by data and metrics. So let's empower them with that and let's give them a sense as to how things are trending. So a couple of specific ideas there. Uh, formal feedback programs. You have to have a systematic method of collecting feedback from your customers. And more importantly, that has to be shared across the organization. A lot of companies don't do that very well. We have a client in the audience, Doxum, out of uh, Canada. They do a really good job of making sure this is front and center. So the, K the KPIs, the metrics, the feedback from customers are talked about across the company. And marketing and HR and product are all informing decisions based on customer feedback. So that's really important. Uh, identify the right key performance indicators. By the way, net promoter is a good KPI in B2B. I know there's some discussion around that in a lot of these uh, venues, but it works really well with a lot of our clients. It gets everybody aligned in thinking about the customer experience. It's a number, uh, but it's much more than that as well. It's a way of thinking, and it, and it focuses the discussion. Importantly, show how improvements in the customer experience and customer satisfaction actually translate into business outcomes. If you can tie improvements in satisfaction and loyalty with retention, that's huge. One of our clients, uh, Trinet, talks about one percentage improvement in retention and what that means is a flow through th to revenue and profitability. And that makes it real for people. They start to see, well, this means uh, real business impact. And then uh, use the unstructured feedback. So the text-based feedback you get in your surveys or in other venues are great for sharing stories across the organization. You get a lot of rich feedback that can tell you the good and maybe the not so good. So use that to uh, continually reinforce. Ensure your employees are engaged and empowered. Now, uh, if you're familiar with the service profit chain, chain construct, very important research done a number of years ago that shows the connection, the correlation between engaged and satisfied employees and loyal customers. So that's something I strongly encourage you all to uh, research. Engaged employees are more likely to deliver a better experience. It seems intuitive, but there's a high correlation there. And uh, a couple of ideas, map the customer journey, give everyone uh, something tangible and visible that they can appreciate about all the touch points in the customer journey 
and, and their role that they play, whether they're customer facing or not, in achieving that success in the customer journey. Provide ongoing and coaching and training around the customer experience. Show a willingness to listen to your employees. Employees have a great sense as to what processes might be inhibiting their ability to deliver a meaningful customer experience, right? So give them a platform, give them a voice, allow them to share, hey, if I can improve one process that'll make my life easier servicing our customers, here's what it would be. So it's kind of a, an electronic suggestion box. And give them the flexibility to do what's right for your customers, even sometimes if it's not the most profitable. Ritz-Carlton has, you know, they're renowned for doing that, empowering their employees to go above and beyond and spend sometimes a fair amount of money to make sure that the customer's happy. Share stories often, so storytelling can be immensely powerful in reinforcing the customer experience and building your culture internally. So, uh, you know, communicate effectively, Share this uh, on an ongoing basis year-round. Harvest stories by reviewing feedback from your customers and from your social media. Uh, so nothing better than actually taking real stories and translating them for your employee base. Share details of wins, right? So when we're able to upsell or we're, we're, when we're renewing a customer account or maybe we're converting someone who was a, a customer in, in bad shape but now we've turned them around. Great stories to talk about in huddles, in all staff meetings, in, uh, in meetings among your department. So the storytelling component is big, and it's something I strongly encourage. Uh, discuss how specific improvements really uh, emanated from customer feedback. So you're collecting all of this wonderful feedback. Show your employees and your customers how you're listening and you're acting on their input. Uh, and that'll go a long way as well. And then I say uh, unattributed negative stories can be used as teachable moments. Generally speaking, we don't want to call out employees who might have been associated with a problem account. So uh, most of our clients are not attributing specific people. But we're talking about where we failed. We're talking about losing accounts or where we fell down because uh, they, of course, can in inform uh, uh, improvements and uh, learning moments as well and align your rewards and recognition programs to customer success. So a little bit of a controversial notion here among some people, but uh, if you tie uh, you know, variable comp to net promoter, and I'm not suggesting to tie customer success people variable comp, but you know, more broadly, as an organization, we've seen it work very well. We have a lot of companies that it's a, a lever in their bonus program for the entire company. Gets people thinking about, hey, we're all working together on this. Uh, shout outs in team meetings and huddles, spot bonus programs. You know, that $10 Amazon gift card can go a long way for someone who really went above and beyond and did great work. And importantly, make sure it's not only the folks on the front lines, right? Because there are people who may be uh, helping out who are a little bit behind the scenes that should be recognized as well. Uh, and uh, celebrate it. You know, a lot of our clients have you know, sometimes promoter parties or they have celebrations where they're talking about all the wins, all the great things that are happening. So uh, those are great all team meetings to uh, celebrate success. So, uh, you know, those are a couple of examples specifically. I think there were about 19. I'm sure many of your companies are doing some of these already. But um, uh, here's some summaries of the things that we talked about. Think about this in your organizations. Even if you just take one or two or three of these tips and you start to uh, socialize this on a regular basis, then it can do a lot to building their culture, to emphasizing the importance of this, to aligning all of your employees so we're all rowing in the same direction. And it's not just you folks, the customer success people on the front lines who are bearing the burden. This really needs to be an entire company effort, part of your DNA, right? Your proverbial North Star. And, and these are some ways that uh, you can get there. So uh, we didn't get a chance to dig in too deep uh, because of the short time allotment, but I'm always happy to chat with folks, come by our booth, or shoot me a note on uh, LinkedIn or email, and we can uh, talk about it a little bit more. But I think uh, at this point, if uh, anybody has questions, we have a couple of minutes. Thanks, Evan. So if anyone has any questions, just raise your hand, and I'll bring the mic over. 
it's anyway. all such straightforward stuff, I think. Uh, I explained it so well. <laughs> <laughs> recently had a switch in our leadership mm -hmm. and our past CEO had started to believe in customer success and saw the traction we were making and his statement was the whole company is engaged in customer success. Mm -hmm. We've had a lack of new sales and the new CEO now says the whole company's engaged in sales. Mm -hmm. How do I help shift him back to, you know, success is revenue. Yeah, that's a, a great question. And uh, I've worked in companies that are very sales centric, uh, that are very uh, product centric, very marketing centric. And it is, it's a challenge to get people to pivot and think about customer success. Importantly, we all know, and it's been talked about a lot here, customer success, customer experience is a revenue engine, right? It is a profit driver. And I think maybe the best uh, advice I can give in that case is to show evidence of that. And, and we get the question all the time, right? Because as a professional services firm, we need to show ROI. So tying in specific improvements and the work that you all are doing and showing how it's flowing through to revenue and profits uh, is certainly one way to do that. And I think um, you know, there are other companies who are passionate about this and who are very successful. There's even some um, uh, metrics that some organizations track this is publicly traded companies who score year after year very, very well in customer experience metrics outperform. So their stocks perform better than the companies who are not as well regarded from a customer experience perspective. So if you want to get your CEO or your leadership team on board, try translating it into this is what it means to the company valuation. Our value as an organization could be X dollars more or X percentage more if we can only tweak this number around retention or upsell, cross-sell, or some of the other things. So of course they respond well to uh, things, discussions like that. Okay, any, uh, one more question maybe in time for? Hi, thank you. Um, we are in the early stages of initiating um, cultural adoption mm -hmm. within our organization. Um, we're actually kicking off customer roundtables mm -hmm. in the next couple of weeks and inviting our entire organization to those roundtables. Mm -hmm. Do you have a, a tip or two of a way to kind of kick that off and really start to engage um, all of our employees? Yeah, good question. I mean, uh, we are very familiar with customer advisory boards, which is a little bit of a tweak on the customer roundtable. Uh, you know, what I would advise in that regard is to have them talk more about, you know, the value, the ROI that uh, they, uh, uh, you know, experience in working with your organization. Because sometimes those types of discussions have a tendency to get in the weeds and really get into you know, kind of feature functionality, which can be important, but you know, make it a little bit big picture wherever you can. Uh, and then I think, um, you know, to some degree, it's gotta be a requirement for all employees to attend these things, right? Um, you have to understand, and this is part of the customer journey mapping, you have to understand how we deliver value to our customers. You have to put yourself, and this is the empathy, the emotional intelligence that we all talk about, put yourself in their shoes, and no better way of putting yourself in their shoes by attending some of these round tables or having a shadow type program and really getting in their head. How do they use our product? How do they derive value from it? Extremely important. So a lot of our clients will actually make those required attendance. Yeah. All right, thank you everybody. Thanks, Thank Evan. you. Um, just a <laughs>